Morning all. I had an interesting game on Monday night. It was in the Hertfordshire League, which I was doing uh, very well in. Uh, I'm, I'm still doing very well in. Um, it was against Hemel Hampstead away. I was playing Steve Law, who I've played a few times before, sometimes with very interesting games indeed, even in my favourite at the end. <laughs> so, in this encounter, um, Steve, I think, was on the high. He's just drawn with... Uh, uh, Simon Knott in the Hearts League, the IM, one of the IMs playing in our league. And, um, okay, so I played uh, Knight F3 and he played D5. And here, I I, I think uh, some, some interesting things about this game is, is the idea of missing frets and the idea of also at the same time creating fret generators. Uh, and here, and, and there's also another notion I want to add to the mix of, of grippy openings. When I say grippy, like gripping squares, you know, like key squares, if you remember in the Sultan Khan games, you know, he would have loved to have played, I would have believed, from, from assessing the games we've seen, D4. And there are, there are different reasons for that. Well, there's, there's a grip on C5 and E5, but it's a more grippy opening in general that he even, might even play E3 and just... Be content with small, modest advantages, uh, and he's not in in the process of, of playing such a grippy opening. Um, it's it doesn't create this any any many fret generators. He doesn't have to worry about too many frets. And even when uh, you you know, might you might consider that black plays c5 later, it might even respond with c3 sometimes. And black is a long way from creating any concrete frets. So this idea of grippy openings and fret generation is interesting. Now here I played c4 uh, optimistically because I was uh, hoping for d4 and to play then the very interesting move b4 which if you remember in an Alakine uh, World Championship game which we covered recently against Erva, this, this was a really interesting game with b4, bishop b2 and e3 later. Okay, unfortunately here he broke my plan here with d takes c4 and I believe he might be an expert in the Queen's game accepted as well. Now here, I actually don't know the theory. I'd assume from Blitz games that this was okay for White, just to collect the pawn, even with Queen A4 check. And we'll check this out in the second pass, but for, for the moment, I'd like to say that Queen A4 check, as played, does mean the Queen is subject to harassment. And that is basically what I'd term a fret generator, creating a fret generator. So if you create a fret generator, which is some sort of tactical liability, um, king safety might be another. You know, um, loose pieces might be another. Uh, these are all potential fret generators, uh, tactical liabilities, and they put an increasing onus on you to see all the opponent frets if you want to try and reduce counterplay later. So if you play in such a way that as having a loose king, uh, queen kicked about, uh, loose pieces everywhere, then it will be very difficult to stop the opponent having counterplay against all of those tactical vulnerabilities. Now here I've introduced this queen's early queen sortie, uh, and it's a potential for a threat generator. On the upside of it, though, it has I have had good results in blitz um, for a particular reason. I think um, Steve played. Bishop d7, which might be an inaccuracy already, and we'll check this in the second pass. There might be a way of just playing knight c6, for example, queen takes, and avoid white using the center extra center pawns with e5, keeping a grip on d4. Then the fret generator is without downside, too much downside for black. Black's got a good share of the center still, can use the queen, harass the queen later. But in the game, he played bishop d7. Okay, and after queen takes c6, we see knight c6, allowing me to play d4. And this is a vast improvement for white. I think white's doing well because these center pawns compensate for the queen. I've created the fret generator, a tactical liability. Uh, but in exchange, I've got some central control. He plays now e6. After knight c3, knight f6. I still think I've got a good, pleasant position here. Bishop f4. 
as tying down this, I have to watch out for potential, you know, tactical ideas like b5 later. Bishop b4, and this bishop is prepared to exchange off to to increase the influence on the light squares. And here, unfortunately, I'm under the influence of a brilliant game that I wanted to show on this channel, an absolutely brilliant game. Kramnik against Kasparov in a King's Engine, totally different position that unfortunately I'd seen earlier in the day. And it was just staggering all the complications. I really want to show you that game at some point uh, soon. Um, but in that game, I thought it was amazing that um, Kramnik had taken the risk to castle queenside. But it was a King's Engine position where Black already had lots of pawns advanced on the King side. It was much more safe, actually, in that particular position of that completely irrelevant game to this one, to Castle Queen side. But I was more daring. I was thinking, why, why can't I Castle Queen side here? Here is threat generator number two. I've got a Queen which is harassable, and I've got a King which isn't that safe on the Queen side. Potentially there's B5s. Uh, but Black now plays a kind of Rosalimo type move, bishop takes c3, is weakening my light squares. And I had hoped in taking with the pawn, okay, if I take with the pawn then a3 is weak, for example. So I thought I'd take with the queen, hoping to reach a position which isn't too bad tactically. I thought knight d5, queen d2, and I have a slight advantage without too much to worry about. And then maybe king b1, rook c1, and we have a nice game. And I should should be okay, and I might even be using the C file later rather cheekily. However, he, although giving up the dark square bishop, he doesn't have to uh, try and get back my dark square bishop with any immediacy here. And he plays an alternative move, A5, which took me by surprise. So I have these weakened light squares from that bishop exchange, which we know... We've been looking at games in, in the Sicilian where bishop b5 is effective for weakening dark squares, but here he's weakened my light squares. And okay, I'm concerned about this knight d5 still. I'm also concerned now about knight b4, forking my queen and king. So I have created two major threat generators working together, two tactical liabilities in a sense, an exposed queen still. Uh, bad king safety and he's exploiting that with a5 and there might even be if I let him a maneuver like this now my next move I thought solves quite a few problems I played e4 because I was hoping uh, that I can actually justify the rook and we'll see in the second pass well the idea for example knight takes e4 I can go queen e1 or e3 and then d5 for example like this which is dangerous um, Okay, he plays knight b4, ignoring it. And I play queen e3, offering the a2 pawn. And I'm hoping here that he will take it uh, to take this pawn. Uh, and then d5, and then d takes, and then I still might have something with bishop c4. And I've got targets, and I've got something, maybe. On the other hand, even in this position, knight g4 is now dangerous. This queen is, is subject to harassment here. Uh, so. Okay, but he doesn't do that. He just castles. So that earlier bishop exchange still did weaken my light squares. These these squares are, are weaker than before. And here I, I actually think, well, his threat here is bishop a4. This, this, this is slightly uh, of a concern. Bishop a4 even. And then maybe even c5 at some point. And so... My reaction here um, is to play king b1 because I wanted to answer bishop a4 with rook c2, still using that c file, justifying the bishop there. But um, okay, unfortunately, this next move, which I kind of missed the power of, is incredibly powerful. It's bishop c6, but I have created a threat generator earlier, and now also actually a third threat generator rears its head. That I've actually got loose pawns in the center, especially after that bishop uh, takes knight transaction. My e4 is quite vulnerable. And if I try and defend this e4 pawn with knight d2, unfortunately here, d4 is also vulnerable. It's only the queen holding up d4. So say knight g4, queen takes d4, he can play like this and go for my king. 
So my sensor collapsing, collapsing and king safety becoming an issue. This would be embarrassing, mate. Otherwise, it's it's pretty pretty dire, whatever way you look at this. So I've managed to create all these fret generators. That would do for winning the queen with check. So unfortunately, I've created lots and lots of tactical vulnerabilities, and there's actually three sets of tactical vulnerabilities: the queen, the king safety, and the center. However. Knight g5, I would say, you know, it gives me the chance of playing f3, but I'd be a piece down without too much compensation there. But my center wouldn't be shredded immediately. Okay, that that's worth um, considering because there's a pin there. Uh, maybe. Okay, or maybe tactically he can he can break that pin in some way uh, with with maybe knight d, knight bd5. But anyway, I didn't really entertain that losing the piece like that. So I found this this resource instead, which I thought might be a saving resource. E takes D, E5, and hoping, really hoping, he'd move the knight. I get a lovely position. So say knight D4. Well, I haven't got too many problems. I kick this one. I go here. I've got an attack, etc. You know, I've, I've even I've got H7 in sight. It's a lovely, rosy, sunny day there for me. Unfortunately, he plays d4, and now I've got some problems. He's threatening now bishop e4, and I assumed actually I actually got a resource. If c2 is the only issue with bishop e4, um, can he really play this if I play knight takes d4? Because I, I reasoned that um, knight takes d4, uh, that as well as covering. Uh, C2 in this position, he'd have this this kind of loose pieces. So I visualized that position and stop there. But actually, it's worth considering in this position, Rook takes D4 with the same idea that King B King C1, the King can go for a bit of walk. But the Queen's attacked. There's there's two pieces loose here. This looks a lot better. It's definitely worth considering Rook D4. But uh, we'll see in the second pass in more detail that actually black can change plan, just go with that knight d5. That early bishop ex bishop for knight really has caused a lot of positional damage on e4 and d5. And overall, this is still a very good thematic sacrifice, what he played here, d4, to liberate his pieces to make them lively. So in whatever case, black's better here after d4. But it turns out my calculations here weren't long enough. After knight takes d4, check, king c1, he did play check, but now unfortunately, and I, I noticed when it was my turn, unfortunately, black has a really crushing, bone crushing move here. I wonder if you can spot it. I might give you 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, black can temporarily sack the bishop. Knight g4. Ouch. I take my bishop, but then a family fork. Whoops. Queen e3. He takes on d1. Whoops. I'm still in a pin here. And I kind of resign. And so I was smashed. <laughs> I was absolutely smashed. Congratulations to Steve Law. Fantastic game. Good revenge. I have beaten him in the past. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just you know the resources of chess can be quite painful. If you miss resources, if you miss frets, this can happen. But also uh, when when checking out the opening, you know these fret generators that I'm talking about, king safety, from the bias of this amazing Kramnik game, queen being harassed. Actually, that's not even the best theory. If we go back here, it turns out. That statistically on chess games com, not the move e4, because e4 might allow black to play like this with a good grip on d4, with good results, some good results for black. But actually, the move here recommended, believe it or not, is e3. And this would save a lot of hassle. The queen wouldn't be so hassled in this position. It's it's actually apparently one of the best moves here. I didn't know that. I think I was playing in Blitz routinely Queen A4. 
but as I mentioned, you know, queen a4, black can play knight c6, and then e5, and this is a reasonably good position for black. Uh, so anyway, we get this position, which um, is actually better than me because he hasn't played that. He's, he's got this kind of silly bishop on d7 for the moment. And I was doing okay here. Um, if we if we turn on an engine evaluation, uh, okay, let's let's have some less lines. Doing okay. Bishop b4 kind of Rosalimo system against me, so he's weakening d5 and e4. He's restricting, restraining my center, so that asset. Um, you know, I've still got this queen as a target, so that's one tactical liability, a threat generator, you might call it. Uh, but uh, if I can just play for castling kingside, you know, say e3. Let's let's go with e3. Let's imagine this this scenario. You know, just playing without creating another threat generator. Maybe bishop g3 is possible here, and possibly castling is a move unless that gets completely murdered with something else now. Knight a5. This should be okay. Okay, bishop b5. You can you can see that the queen is subject to harassment. Would I have to lose a pawn? Maybe not. Maybe because because um, this kind of forcing variation. If knight c3, I think I've got queen d2 here. Or quick queen e1, but uh, this kind of position is still a lot safer than the game. My king is cozy, okay, but it's almost as if the queen was kind of punished. Uh, it, on c4, just to demonstrate, the queen can can be punished even if I don't create another threat generator. I've already got one tactical liability going on here, but I create a second one, and black immediately from an engine point of view. Has actually got a significant advantage after casting queenside. It's just far too risky. I've already got one risk factor. I've created another. Okay, he takes on c3, which might not be the best move. Uh, if I take him with the pawn, then that's worse as well. Let's see, knight e4, that's on f2 as well. Black's light square control is quite powerful here so this is kind of nimzo engine type knights it's not looking that pleasant this position so let, let's go back so kind of facing in a reverse Rosalimo in a way this this exchange of bishop and knight so he's weakened my light squares and a5 I have to play very carefully I played e4 so in fact king b1 would do here if this kind of fishing pole on the queen side, I think maybe I can afford even queen c7 as the engine suggests. It's getting a li little bit hairy, but scary to take on c7 materialistically, though. Uh, so the move I played e4, well, he didn't entertain knight takes e4. And apparently, um, well, this position, I mean, it should be okay. There's some play, I'm generating some play. He, he wisely avoids that. Why take that risk? So here he's he could have taken on a2 immediately, or knight g4 is, is mentioned. But he just castles. Now here is an opportunity. This was an opportunity, it seems, to test the fishing pole with a3. Can he just leave it there? So if he goes to c6, I'll, I'll be quite happy. Um, you know, maybe I can compensate for the queen being here. I can play h3 as well to stop knight g4. And I've got this center, and I've got the advantage, it seems, technically, from an engine point of view. But um, I doubt he would play like that. I think he would use this fishing pole here and play something like bishop c6, for example. But it's, it's technically unsound, but is it an easy pos to position to play? This kind of position. Well, maybe b5 here suppresses black's counterplay, so that, that's not... Uh, too bad it seems, but a4 it starts to get dangerous again. Just my my king on the queen side is, is in general um, liability. Mind you, bishop g5 here that's a nasty pin. It should be okay. It should be okay here. This 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 isn't too much to worry about. Basically, I regretted quite quite a lot not playing a3 here when I had the chance. 
I didn't sense the danger of the centre being a third liability in the position. Um, so, and, it, and it definitely is. This this is a loose centre. Uh, so the problem with not playing a3 is I haven't got bishop d3 ever as well. You know, you could imagine after knight a6, for example, any bishop c6 has bishop d3. The centre is not not a big deal. You know, bishop c6, bishop d3. So this knight on b4 is ready to take on d3. It's not just about my king. So a3 actually is a good way of just kicking the knight. Very simple. Although it's weakening some squares, it's no big deal compared to leaving the knight there. If bishop a4, now this is slightly tricky. More tricky. I'd have to calculate this uh, if I on a3 as well. If a takes, and actually black's better, bishop takes d1. Black's actually better. This a file, that's too much. So here I'd have to be able, I'd have to play rook d2, which is okay. It covers c2. It's still tenable this position, just about. If we test white a bit further, knight g4. Okay. Queen e2. Now the fishing pole actually can be left with queen e8 for one move here. This is why it is it is getting dangerous because now there's queen. Also queen c6, so it's a scary position fundamentally with the king, and this is demonstrating it more. Will I be able to play this position? If I had the position, would I just would I've just played king b1? The engines are finding the absolute best moves. If I just played king b1, bishop b3, this is getting very very scary indeed. So he's not going to give me this position where the knight's going back. He's going to play for this. So. It's early in the game, really, that I've created the tactical, you know, the threat generators, the liabilities. We we usually call them tactical liabilities, but maybe we can we can call them threat generators as well. By casting queenside, my king is fundamentally unsafe. This knight, this whole plan of a5 and knight b4, creating the fishing fishing pole on the queenside, is a complete pain. But my centre is is really in danger here. Um, let's let's have a look at this this variation again. Knight d2 with engine inspection. Apparently, there's a move here, queen e1 for min the lesser evil. So queen g3, as I mentioned, queen takes d4 is just completely crushing. So bishop takes e4 here, completely crushing. Um, you know, if takes, well then there's the classic smothered mate. For those of you that haven't seen smothered mate before, well, here, here it goes. Whoops. Let's see two. So that's that's fairly bad stuff happening to my king. Uh, so d5, okay, and after e d e5, he played d4, which might not be technically the best. So apparently, my absolute best move for survival was rook takes d4 here, as I mentioned. Now bishop e4 check gets. Uh, a complicated position after king c1 takes king d1 now here would he have been able to play this continuation that the engine is suggesting or he doesn't actually need to my king on d1 is silly maybe he just he just takes here and actually plays knight d5 well this this is what and what the engine is mentioning as well this this is better for black this is just horrendous for me horrendous surely because he just plays now c6 blacks Clearly better. I've been done over basically in this game, whatever, whatever way you look at it from here. I've been done over. So, fantastic play uh, from Steve, very energetic, um, getting very, very good uh, play from that early bishop exchange. Um, the power of this bishop, you know, for either a4 or c6 has been demonstrated. I thought it was a sleeping bishop earlier, I'd completely underestimated. That bishop, and now I'm slaughtered with this long, well, this forcing sequence, not particularly long forcing sequence here. Uh, there's nothing much I can do here. I have to hold on to d4. Um, so, yeah, bit of a crunch game, and one which slightly dented my my performance in Hearts League. Five wins, two losses now, no draws. <laughs> and, and, and the recent no draws debate that makes me. Uh, happy that at least, you know, I haven't I haven't gone out to these matches to draw any games, you know, quickly or whatever. 
It's either win or lose with me in the Hearts League. Five out of seven. Five wins, two draws. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'll smash there. It can happen. Chess, you know, when you're playing very resourceful players, energetic, this can happen. Comments or questions on YouTube. Um, thanks very much.